Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and I am in way over my head. I have a Zygu XPA 125B amplifier. The amplifier works great until you cross some wires that aren't supposed to be connected to anything and then they burn out. And I've gotten this report from quite a few people out there who have run through the same thing and they actually helped me figure out what the right parts were in order to get this thing replaced. We're looking at, can you even see that? This is insane. We're looking at getting those kind of parts put inside of an amplifier. <sighs> Took me about like an hour or so just to get up the courage to get the video started. Let's go over to the workbench before I lose my courage to get this thing done. This is gonna be interesting. This is the Zygu XPA 125B. Look at that amplifier. I got kind of an extreme close-up going on here because we're gonna be doing some extremely fine close-up detail level work. This is a 100 watt uh, amplifier that will take your QRP radio and make it no longer QRP. And uh, that's got some appeal. I made a custom cable for the Zygu X6100 and I left some leads unattached. And while leaving those leads unattached should not have been a problem because they were labeled as NC, no connect. In the manual, that apparently doesn't mean the same thing in the native language that it means in the translation to English. And so what I wound up with was two wires that should not have connected to anything, but when shorted together, uh, caused a big, huge problem. And I shorted those wires together while this thing was not even turned on. I was actually rearranging my shack, putting this thing away on a on a shelf and then I was investigating what that crazy smell was when I set it down across the room and I know what the crazy smell was so I had to phone in a couple of friends and I've heard that this problem actually happens quite a bit and so we're making this video on how to repair it and it happens for reasons other than just shorting out those wires I don't know what they all are but this repair is going to be about the same there will be links to the parts that I use in the description down below and there will be um, some better pictures of what the actual problem was. There's a handle here, so I can't see the screw hiding behind the handle. Uh, when we get to have this thing opened up. It's been a while repairing this. I'm, I haven't been looking forward to this. This is going to be removal of some surface mount components and adding of some surface mount components. So let me get the rest of these screws out and then we'll get right back to it. Okay, so we learned a little bit of something right there and I forgot this from the last time that I took this thing apart. These are all the screws that go around the front and the rear of the amplifier. And these are the screws that go around the side of the top panel over here. They are, they are definitely shorter for the sides. You do not need to remove all of the screws for the front and rear. So give me a second while I put those back into place, the ones that I, don't need to remove because it makes it easier to not lose them if they are already installed. And if I would have known there was going to be this many of them, <laughs> I would have gotten some power tools. But now I'm in that conundrum where which one is more lazy? Going and getting the power tools and getting all set up and leaving my comfy chair where I'm working or staying here and using the manual tool? I, I can't decide. So those screws won't be lost. Let's put that aside. And we'll do the same thing for the back. And I must have known about this from the last time because I have my 5 ths screwdriver bit in the box for the repair. Oh well, I guess it pays to go all the way through the box before you go too far. Okay, so we've got some burnt up parts in this area right here. This one and the one directly next to it. Let's do a little bit of a zoom. All right, what I'll do is I'll take a picture and I will share it out that way. But you can see there's a hole in that. And then this thing is all charred to death. So we're gonna try and get those removed. I have no idea what I'm doing here, but it's already broken. So I can't make it any worse. Turn on my soldering iron, warm that up. And I'm gonna try and use some solder braid first. And then we will get into more and more difficult tools to use as we go on. I 
us a little bit of progress. Some isopropyl alcohol. actually take solder when I put it onto that pad. Yep, it will take solder, so we're able to make some progress. What was I getting myself into? Okay, so I have removed this transistor here. This is a diode that needs to be removed, and there's a little tiny thing right in there next to it, and a little tiny thing right in there next to it. So that's going to be fun. Let's see what we can do about the more free side. Okay, that one wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. The other one broke into pieces, but this is much cleaner here. So the diode's gonna be a lot easier to put on than the transistor. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on stick. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just going to lose that piece. Man, I can't even read that. Okay, so diodes have a polarity. They are directional. And this little guy has a marker on it, and so does the Oh, it's too small. Try to go easy on the caffeine on the days that you are going to be doing this work. Oh, this is fun. This is why I keep all these solder legs. Now I'm going to have to make up the distance here. Oh, I lost it. It popped out of the tweezers. Okay. All right, let's try this a different way. That is not working out the way I wanted it to work out. I'm going to try and just make solder bridge. Nope, that ain't working out either. All right, so this thing is running at about 8x speed, and I fooled with this for way too long. I actually cut out a bunch of it. This is the part that I left in. This does not work. Basically, the piece of wire that I was working on is so small that it just stuck to the soldering iron, and there was no way to deal with it. So eventually, I gave up. And what I did instead was I used a much longer leg. You'll see that coming up here. And there was something to grab onto. There was something to sink away some of the heat so it didn't stick to the soldering iron. I'm chasing this thing all over the board. This is crazy. And uh, that made it work. That got it done. In the future, I'm either going to get the right component. This is the one that Zygu told me was right. Or I'm just going to put a regular old through hole on there and call that good enough. Because that'll work too. Next up, more pain. worse my soldering job or the fact that I can't even see my soldering job that wasn't frustrating at all not a bit all right I guess next up is power it on and see what we get with the power that's gonna be interesting fingers crossed I am plugged into power here it goes through a 20 amp fuse into my 35 amp power supply we replaced this transistor and we did a janky job replacing that diode, but it appears to be in place. I put the front panel back on, which contains the on-off switch. 
So let's turn the power supply on first. Power supply is on. I see nothing weird going on here. This is a plastic tool, so I'm not gonna shock myself. I'm just double checking some stuff. Not that I have any reason to check in one direction or the other. Moment of truth. There's the on-off switch. And it clicked into life. You can see some of the lights here on the back of the display panel. So that indicates that that's running. Give it the old smoke test. I don't see anything. All right, let's turn it back off. Turn the power supply off. That's all dead. Let's unplug it. And I'm gonna put it back together and rearrange the camera real quick. All right, so there goes that. We are plugged back in. We are back on on the power supply. And there we go. Okay, let's get her plugged in and everything rearranged. Let's get a radio set up here. Okay, folks, the moment of truth. This is where it gets really interesting. This is the homemade cable. I have taped off the leads, gotten them out of the way. Nothing to worry about there. There's the other lead that was causing some problems. So we'll put that out of the way. We are at 20 meters on the 6100. Good enough. And then the amplifier has automatically detected that it's 20 meters. Let's change bands. We went to 18100, which is 17 meters. The amplifier automatically detected the change to 17 meters. All right, I have my 3D printed Morse code key here. Let's turn the amplifier off. Let's turn the tuner off. So you see off, off there. And over here we have our MFJ 267 dummy load. Always want to use a dummy load when you're testing out something new like this in case something goes crazy. Let's key her up. All right, so we're getting a good five watts out over there. And what's this say over here? Four, four, four. I can, I can go with that. I can be accepting of that for now. Uh, this is running on battery power. My battery in the 6100 is at 7.8 volts. Anything's possible at this point. Okay, so let's turn the tuner on. I'm trying to tune a dummy load. I know that's not going to get me anywhere, but I want to see that that functionality still works. Okay, so we're getting five there, one to one. And it attempted to tune. The relays clicked, so that's working. Let's turn the amplifier on. And let's watch over here on this meter and down here. So I'm going to key up 3.895, over 100 out. All right, I am happy with that. Oh my, that, that was some scary stuff there. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I wasn't sure the patient was going to make it. Um, advanced directives, DNR, all that kind of stuff was in play. It was, it was some scary stuff. And then I plugged it all back in. I'm like, all right, which radio do I attempt to destroy with this? I don't know. But you saw on the test bench over there with the dummy load that everything works fine. And I am very happy. <sighs> Big sigh of relief. And, uh, what I always say about repairing stuff like this is you can't make it any worse than it already is. It already didn't work. It was already a brick. It was already a, a paperweight. There was nothing I could do with it except for spend a whole bunch of money sending it to somebody else who knew better than I did how to repair it. And that would be just about anybody. But how do you learn something? You learn something through experience. Experience comes from successes and failures. This could have been a success. This could have been a failure. We lucked out with this being a success. I'm very, very happy with the results of this. And I may, I may actually have some courage to do it again in the future. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, there is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.